Hey, Spontonians, before we get to the episode, I just want to plug some live dates very quickly. Saturday, July 14th, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Spontaneous Nation Live as part of the We the People Improv Fest. Eugene Cordero, Tony Newsom, Little Janet Varney. Saturday, July 14th in Philadelphia. Two shows. I think one is sold out. The other one is about to. So get those tickets. Detroit, coming to the Detroit Improv Festival, Spontaneous Nation Live on August 9th. Two shows at the Magic Bag Theater. The next night, Paul F. Tompkins and friends, just me and some of my favorite people doing some regular old improv and having a great time. Also at the Magic Bag, two shows. London, coming to the London Podcast Festival, Saturday, September 15th, Spontaneous Nation Live is happening with Tawny Newsom and little Janet Varney and special guests to be revealed. London, we are coming to see you Saturday, 15 September. For all tickets, go to pauleftompkins.com slash live. And now, enjoy the show. Well, uh, welcome, I guess. Uh, afraid you've caught us uh, unawares. We, we uh, just finishing up some old business, I guess, before uh, starting in the old show. I, you know, we try to put on a good front for, uh, for strangers, for a company. You know, I remember that was a big thing, like not acting up in front of company because it gives people the impression, the wrong impression, of what we're like at home. I'd be out with my parents and uh, I would act up. Usually, uh, you know, it'd be things like uh, I'd go to a stranger and say, You will die on June 13th. <laughs> My mother would get so mad, she'd like pinch my arm. Don't tell people they're going to die June 13th. We were gifted, you see. We had, we had a certain shining, you could say. My family, we were all death psychics. That was the only thing, <laughs> the only way in which we were extraordinary is we knew when everyone was going to die. Now, we didn't know the dates of our own deaths, but we didn't know the dates of each other's deaths. And that made things tense at dinner. <laughs> and you could t you could tell when people would start to pull away, you're like, I guess he is going to die soon because <laughs> they used to talk a lot. Now they don't talk that much. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A friend of mine gets terminally ill. The relationship is over. <laughs> Because then it's all on their terms. <laughs> oh, you're in hospice care. I have to. You can't ever come to me. <laughs> Everything's organized around your schedule. Your home base. Look, obviously this is some gallows humor because it's a sad thing when your friend dies, especially if on the gallows. <laughs> I've had so many friends executed for treason. <laughs> oh, it's a sad thing, folks. It's a sad thing to watch your friend betray your country and then be sentenced to death by a military tribunal. And then hanged on your front lawn. <laughs> That's right. The military tribunal was mad that I didn't turn my friend in, and they decided to make it Grizzly. My friend, his name was Grizzly Adams. That's right. He lived with bears and betrayed this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paula Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to join me in a free-form conversation inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then... 
I invite some improviser pals onto the show to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes. Inspired by a location provided to us by someone. And oftentimes, utilizing details gleaned from the conversation with the aforementioned special guest. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. Folks, I'm so excited to have this person here today. <laughs> She's making her second appearance on the show. First time as my interview guest. You will know her as one of the members of Wild Horses. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like we got tamed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's someone who thinks they have tamed the wild horses, but they are sadly mistaken. Please welcome back to the show, Aaron Whitehead. Thank you. Aaron, hello. Hi. <laughs> I forgot that "hia" is is an it's exclamation of. <laughs> <it's a man. laughs> are you saying no woman has ever said "hia"? Sure, but she she tamed those wild horses too. Yah is a cowgirl cowboy thing, right? It's true. Yah. It's true. Yah. Yah. Not Haya, which is a karate thing. Ha! <laughs> could you tell I took karate? No, of course I could. That was very forceful. Ha! And you broke my wooden ah, clock. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, did you say karate? Me. No, I took taekwondo, though. Taekwondo for how long? And how old Three were you? Three months. <laughs> was this recently? No, I took it when I was 15. Mm -hmm. I... I dropped out of PE in school. Uh, <laughs> How did you do that? Were you allowed to do that? I had Oshkut Schlatter's, which was a very serious knee problem. And my doctor said I could stop taking PE uh, and, or should because you're not allowed to run. You can, you can damage the tendons or something when you're still growing. What is it called? Oshkut Oshgood Schlatter's. Oshkut Schlatter's. And so I found this out in like seventh or eighth grade and they let me stop taking PE and I would just sit in the library and cut out pictures of Christian Slater from all the magazines. That's true. The ones your mom didn't get to. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what, um, what, what happens with this condition? What happens to your knee? You grow. It's basically like you have a growth spurt. It's more common in women. Like you grow really fast. So I think I grew like four inches in less than a year. Wow. And your tendons don't grow as fast. Mm -hmm. So they tear to a very thin point. And if you run, they can tear completely and uh. you can be paralyzed. But that's like oh worst case God. scenario. I don't think mine was that bad. I think I was just like, yeah, I'm I'm gunning for a reason not to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now we're taking the chance. Yeah. So did you have did you have growing pains? Yeah. I remember having one where I literally fell down in the bathroom. Like it was just sudden pain in oh. my leg. Like I always, I always thought that was an expression, just an expression yeah. of like, you know, like an emotional expression. But then, it, but I, I remember finding out that, no, that's an actual thing. Like a real like, thing. It's a physical thing. Yeah. Yeah. Someone was just saying that their kid was like, mom, my bones hurt. And I was <laughs> like, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd thought to say it. I also wish that I'd had that bone pain. <laughs> Aaron, I have a question for you okay. from our previous episode's <laughs> guest. Thank you for being so amenable. That question is, if you were calmly eating, say, a banana split, and you looked across the room and saw yourself, but from five minutes earlier, what would you do? I would, I would just be thrilled. <sighs> I would just be so excited that finally, like, the thing that's supposed to happen in my life is happening. A magical occurrence. Exactly. Yeah. yeah An like, actual magical occurrence. Yes, I'd be like, oh, fucking finally. Like, here I've been just like, we don't know what we're doing in my life. Like, I don't know what we're doing. And then to see myself, I'd be like, this has got to be it. Like, something's happening. I'm going to go talk to her. <laughs> so what What would you go up and say to yourself? It's time. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd hope with only five minutes difference, we'd be on the same page. I would be, see, I would be terror. First of all, I, my first reaction would be terror. Mm. Probably disgust too. Like, oh. That's what I eat like? That, yeah. <laughs> that is what I like. I, I mean, knew it. I would be bummed. But I've caught myself in the mirror I before. I would be bummed. But no, you're, you're, seeing, you're seeing yourself earlier, so it's before you're having the banana split. Oh, it hadn't arrived You're yet. having the banana split in the present. Uh, either one of me saying, has to see the other, though. Because you could ask five minutes ago me this very same question, Right. What would you do if you looked across the room and you just ordered a banana split? If you, you just saw, ordered a banana split. And you saw yourself eating that banana split five minutes later. 
Well, I think I think this question presupposes <laughs> that the past you does not know the future you is there. Oh, I didn't re- I didn't get that. Well, you well, I, you know what? It's open to interpretation, I guess. But I took it as oh, so I'm you invisible? see you see <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm so. thrilled. I know, of course. No, <laughs> any way it shakes out, you're happy. But I, think, I don't think it's that you're invisible. I think you have not seen, your past self has not seen your, your future self yet. I haven't looked up. You're probably looking at the menu. <laughs> and then your future self already, already eating the banana split. It's also crazy because I've literally never ordered a banana split. No one ever has. It's not my it's favorite It's never thing. happened. Yeah. <laughs> a banana split. <laughs> But I, don't, I, I don't think even on Riverdale, which was the most likely place where you would physically see somebody or are you talking about split. the little show on now or the actual comic book? Because they definitely ate splits on that. In the comic Jughead book, in them. the comic book, of course, just like down the hatch. What did Jughead after love? Oh, right? He loved to eat, and he was so skinny. I hate him. I think he didn't love women, though. Jughead was for sure gay, right? In the comic books, I would think. They never showed him attracted to a girl or interested in her. He was always like, get them out of here. Let's go get a burger. Exactly. Or more like 100 burgers. He cared about hamburgers a lot. Yeah. And I think that – I'm sure there were comics where he – like a woman thought that uh, he was attracted to her, but then it turns out there was like a stack of hamburgers behind right her. Right behind or something her, like that. yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. <laughs> he may have been asexual, perhaps, Jughead. Why are we talking? I am so curious about asexuality. I watched a documentary on it, but the documentary was one of those disappointing ones where by the end they were like, yeah, maybe it doesn't exist. <laughs> and I was like, well, they, all they, that like, for the job? It seems like you just don't put it out then. <laughs> they were debunking it? Like everyone ended up in a relationship by the end, but some of them were like, but it's out of loneliness or like, or actually I was repressing my sexuality. It kind of didn't feel like they knew how to attack it. So they ended up in a sexual relationship, not just a relationship, but a sexual relationship. I can't remember. This is some faulty reporting, Aaron. I mean, I'm hypothetically sexual at this point. I don't do anything with anybody. <laughs> Might as well be. <laughs> when you were a kid, you were waiting for magic to happen? Were you looking for things to happen like um, that? Yeah, but I hadn't, not in a as conscious of a way. Right. Because I think like I've obviously hadn't read Harry Potter didn't exist when right. I was little, but I was very into m- movies like uh, Flight of the Navigator, uh, which I've never seen. Uh, but there's a magic thing in that. What yeah, happens? Ugh, it's amazing. This boy is walking through the woods on his way home, mm. and suddenly he he like he like falls down this hall this hill, and he's gone. Like no one sees him again, mm. and he's been abducted by Pee Wee Herman playing an alien, and. Sarah Jessica Parker is in the movie as well. She sure. plays a nurse and he shows up in the future, like uh, 20 years later. And it, so his younger brother is now like a full adult. His family is like, can't believe it. But oh, so he shows up as is, as he as was. As is. Then. So yeah. it's like blowing everyone's mind. Right. And he has to start, but he has no memory of the abduction. He just shows up 20, 20 years later and he thinks it's the next second. Like he wakes up in the woods and he's like, I'm back, wanders around. Uh, ah, yeah, he doesn't wake up in a hospital. He, w- he wakes up exactly where he fell. Right goes to his old house they don't live there anymore so it's like he panics and he ends up taken to like a psych ward where his family is reunited with him and but then he has to he he has to figure out what he has to piece together what happened to him so that he can get back to his normal time in so the 80s <laughs> we we don't we don't see him abducted at first no you don't know what happened right. it's just he just like it's like a flash and then it looks totally normal it's such a good movie but when, i wanted that to happen when do we meet peewee well, you never see him. He's a voice. Oh, okay. But he's, very, but he's doing the Pee Wee Herman voice. <laughs> yeah. he do, I mean, either it – what's funny now to me as a kid is I was like, that's definitely Pee Wee Herman. I would love to look it up now and be like, there's just some actor doing Pee Wee Herman as an alien. <laughs> well, do, somebody might be looking it up as we speak. <laughs> Great. Um, <laughs> I mean, if they got SJP, they must have gotten Pee Wee. <laughs> <laughs> They were like the Paul Newman and Robert Redford of the 80s. Um, what were the, if you could have had anything happen to you, magical, had a, had a magic, magical experience when you were a kid, mm-hmm. what would it have been? Oh, God, this is really sad, but I just would have had my dad like reappear and not be dead. Oh. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that would have been like the magical thing that of like course. something happened. Yeah. I always fantasize and I still do that like I'll suddenly figure out how to like 
no, I don't really want to time travel because then I'd be this age. Oh, awful. And like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I don't want to go back in time and be this age, what? 29. <laughs> Too attractive. What if my dad was into it? No, I uh, I want to flash back to myself at that age, but with answers, with like, here's how you treat the cancer. Like, I brought this, right. I brought it back somehow from the future, and this, and they, and like, they don't know. They're like, how does this five year old know this? And I just do. right, right, right. Don't steal it. That's a movie. That's actually a pretty good. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were, I mean, were there? Th- there must have been things like similar there must have been either either books or movies that had similar kind of plot lines because i think it's a very that's a very delicate area especially for any entertainment that's aimed at children to give them this horrible false hope that something like this could even be possible because of course it's what you wish yeah was there anything that came what what came close to that when you were a kid i don't know i mean i was really into that book the secret garden but her parents stay dead <laughs> so i don't know uh <laughs> She, but I did love that uh, she fell in love with this cripple named Colin, who was a very a rich cripple. boy. Yeah, he did. That's what they called him. Of you know, course. but he was just always in bed under like silk sheets, and he was like really haughty and like mean, and always had a fever. And I was like, I was like, I want them to get together. Like I couldn't wait. I was like, just get on the bed, just make out with him. I was eight. <laughs> did he ring a little bell? Did he have a little bell to he ring for service? Have. He must have. He was always surrounded by nurses pampering him. And then it turned out she was just like, get up, let's go to the garden. And he'd just been, you know, weak. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> what, um, uh, as you got older, did you keep this, this love? I mean, obviously you kept this love of, of magic and you yeah. know, things like that. What, what were the things like, say, when you were in high school? that you kind of wished could occur? In high school, um, I think in high school, magic, it's so, this is like sad to say now. Every, all my answers are so sad. But I feel like in high school is when I was like, I like romance became almost sci-fi Yeah. to, to the point where I was like obsessed with it. And even though now when you think about what I thought romance was then, it, Sounds very fictional and was because it was based on movies. But yeah. I, but the idea of what it would be like to be loved and love someone, and it was always really tragic. You know, like mm-hmm. this is the one person you can be with. I loved Romeo and Juliet. I love, you know, like yeah. So I think the idea of like a soulmate was sort of took over as the idea of magic or sci-fi for mm-hmm. a time. And yeah. then now that I know that's a whole fake, I <laughs> right. I'm back to Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who was, who, you don't have to give a full name, but who was the person that you had designated as your tragic soulmate at oh that God. age? Well, I had a huge crush on <laughs> who's dead now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I feel like the guy in Mumford when all his <laughs> Did you see Mumford? No. Never mind, just see it. Um but yeah. Uh I had a huge crush on him. I had a huge crush on a guy named uh <laughs> who's not dead. Um, but he did become a poet. And <laughs> what's the difference? Might as well. He became a professional poet? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> He would post very deep poems on Facebook and w- as oh. a dad, you know, where you're like, you're probably not publishing if they're going up here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why, why buy the cow? <laughs> <laughs> so it would, be, it would be poems about his son or daughter or whatever? No, they were like, they were like the kind of poems I would have written in high school. Like very sad, very right. dark. Um, yeah. Did you write poetry in high school? Yeah, I wrote a b- bunch of poems in my journals. I kept very regular journals. Do you still? Uh, no, I don't. Did when you do you still have all your journals? I do. Okay, and you look back at that stuff sometimes. Yeah. How do you feel when you read those things? It's really interesting to look at the ages because uh, I'll look at the ones from like ninth or tenth grade, and in some ways, I'm like, God, I was almost smarter than I am now in mm-hmm. some ways, but also like the writing is trying so hard to be smart. Like every other word is a huge word that's not used correctly and <laughs> often spelled incorrectly. Right. And it's like just reading a thesaurus, <laughs> but, a, but a wrong right. one. Uh, so I was really trying to look smart to myself, right. like no one else read, read this. Uh, but then I read journals from my, my 20s mm-hmm. and I'm like, 
that was clearly the most depressing part of my life. Like I read them and I'm like, man, I, I mean, I'm 29. So what am I talking about? But, um, <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're bad. Like I sound like a vapid, depressed idiot, like just <laughs> bad. But you sound, you sound like an idiot because of the, the things that, that obsessed you at the, at the time. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> obsessed, but also like I was, I would be stuck in situations and you can see me talking about how I hate them and I just make no move <laughs> to get out. Right. Which I know we all do to some extent. Yes. I'm sure I do it now, but I think there's a little more of a consciousness of, of like, well, what things could I do every day to try to change this? Yeah. At that age, I was just like, Ugh, I hate that this is the, you know, the case. What, what are these relationships? One was a really, yeah, relationship and then uh, like acting career. That still mm -hmm. hasn't been solved. Um <laughs> Someone yesterday goes, you want to act? And I was like, yeah, see, this is how well my career is going. <laughs> People don't even know. <laughs> what uh, were the things about like jobs and stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, I mean, my jobs at that time were, I was a nanny, mm -hmm. I was a caterer mm -hmm. and I was a substitute teacher. So it was a lot. <laughs> was what what substitute teaching did you do? Uh, I did pre-K through high school for 10 years on and off. I, Aaron, I can't even imagine. <laughs> I can't even imagine. It's so, I was like my, the first year I did it, kids would come into the classroom and be like, who's this up? And I was like, I am. <laughs> like they couldn't, <laughs> couldn't tell. Because <laughs> I looked oh, so They thought young. you were just a brand new student. I looked so, <laughs> I started when I was like 22. Like I was like, Four years older right. than a senior. That okay. that is always crazy to me to think about because at the, when you're in high school, you don't think about your teacher being barely older than you right. are. But when I look back at it, like, oh, that guy. And I, I think I've talked about it on here before that I had a geometry teacher that was – one day I distinctly remember, and I don't think I understood this at the time, clearly hungover. Like – like had like probably still a little shit face from the night before, oh, God, but like so just crazy. sweating and yeah. just like looked horrible. And he must, and I think about him now and I, I, in my mind, I see him as so young. Like he looks like a child in right. my memory and he was our, you know, <laughs> he was my geometry it teacher. It is funny to think now how many times your, my teachers were like in a bad mood that day. Mm -hmm. I bet they were fucking hung over. That didn't even occur to me until <laughs> you just said that. It's a lot of fun to think it about. it was like, uh, like you're like, God, why is he so mean today? You know, like we weren't really being much worse than right. normal. Mr. Siebel's, ugh. He used to keep a... Mr. Siebel's would was 22 mm -hmm. and a full-time teacher. He kept a safety pin in his hat and I asked him why. And he was like, in case a girl ever needs one. And so then after that, I got a crush on him and I, I'd be like, can I have your safety pin? I need one. I need one. I must have taken like 50 of his safety pins. <laughs> in case a girl needs one. God. Did you drink in high school? Yeah, I started at 14. Wow. Yeah. Like raging? I, I mean, I liked what I tasted. I, was ah! like, I can't believe how oh quickly, God. like, I loved it so much. Like, there was no, like, ew, alcohol tastes bad. I was like, this is really great. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> what, was, what was your drink? Well, this will date me a little. Uh, it was Zima. Oh! <laughs> Yeah, that night I double fisted. I had Zima and red wine. I was going back and forth between them. Oh, God. And my crush. Oh, I'm not afraid to use full names. <laughs> You're really not. Uh, he explained to me that sometimes people uh, can kiss without liking each other, and that was okay. And even though he knew I was in love with him, we made out. And then I was like, but now he must be in love with me, right? I have a whole journal entry where I'm like, Dylan explained to me that. He oh my God, me. it's so sad. It's me being like, and I agree with him. Like, I'm too attached. Like, I guess I did, but it, by how I go through this whole thing where I'm like, this is when I first, my mind is like broken a little. And I'm like, wait, why would you want to kiss someone if, if you don't have feelings for them? Like, I didn't understand that there, right. that could ever happen. <laughs> right. But that, Dylan taught me. <laughs> Maybe we should edit the full name. Those are, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, can, we can bleep out names if you like. Eh, whatever. This is a real ladybird moment. <laughs> uh, Aaron, 
<laughs> thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, well, well, you can stick around. Yes. Yeah. Great. We'll get to plugs and all that, all that shit later. Um, all right. But I say to be so crass, everybody. <laughs> Look, we're keeping a loosey goosey here. Everyone's friends. We're just hanging out. Okay. But seriously, you have to listen to the ads. July 9th is not too late to celebrate July 4th with a premium foam mattress designed and assembled and manufactured in the USA. Lisa leveraged 30 plus years of experience and hundreds of hours of testing to develop the perfect mattress for all body shapes and sleeping styles. Did you do that? I bet you didn't. Lisa's mission is to provide a better night's sleep for everybody. Through their 110 program, they donate one mattress for every 10 they sell. That's more than 26,000 mattresses and counting. Lisa strives to leave the world better than they found it. Lisa, are you all right? But that doesn't stop with mattress donations. Together with the Arbor Day Foundation, Lisa plants one tree for every mattress they sell, and they are committed to planting one million trees by 2025. Me too, by the way, but I don't go tooting my horn about it. I've planted three trees. Lisa wants to help you sleep better. Hurry. The Lisa July 4th mattress sale won't last long. Get $160 off a Lisa mattress at lisa.com slash PFT today. That is L-E-E-S-A dot com slash PFT for $160 off. Lisa, a better place to sleep. We did it. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Do, 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 do. Hey, we're back, folks. Guess what? It is time to meet our friends from the world of make pretends. <laughs> Seated right next to me, as he was the last time he was here. You've already chosen your lucky seat. That is, that is correct. Is that? Are you a creature of habit in that way? I'm a creature of habit. I eat pretty much the same thing every day. Edgar, uh, be quiet. Edgar <laughs> Montplazier is here. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> you, asked, you set me up for that. but it's You're okay. going to say you can eat the same thing every day? I pretty much do, yeah. I am like that as well. Yeah, what do you eat? What's your thing? <sighs> I didn't expect this to be turned back around on me. Like for breakfast, mm-hmm. I could eat... This currently, I'm eating this meal, which is a egg Mm -hmm. over medium. Is an a egg or an egg? It's an egg. Okay. But for fun, I like to say a egg. Yeah. (laughs) And on the side, I'm not done yet with this meal. (laughs) I didn't say you were. (laughs) On the side, I will have a vegetarian breakfast patty. Oh, from uh, Morningstar? Morningstar Farms. Adventism right there. I'll do... What is that? That's just because I was raised Adventist. That's all I was allowed to eat for breakfast. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Because of the vegetarian thing. I did not realize that. I didn't know that was part of the religion. Like across the faith. Not all Adventists are uh, vegetarians, but it is enforced a little bit. Really? It's it's, it's highly suggested. Let's say that. Why isn't it just enforced? (laughs) Because you know this. I mean, you're a religion. Make up rules. Meat's good. It is good. good. You know, and according, like, they follow the uh, 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 Jewish health law that's in, like, right. uh, numbers and all that in Deuteronomy. So, like, meat is still allowed as long as it's, it's cut kosher. Right. So that's why it's not super enforced because there is a biblical backing for eating meat. Mm-hmm. But the head of Adventism, Ellen G. White, was just like, hey, yo, don't be eating that meat. <laughs> Did you like those Morning Star Farms? Oh, Morning Star, I love. They're good. Yes, they're yeah, very, very they're good. They're really good. You get the hot and spicy ones. Yes, yeah. Go check out... Uh, <laughs> I feel like veggie meat Worthington. It's a very I, good. This sounds very fancy. Can I afford it? Well, of course. Their dinner roast, mwah, fantastic. Worthington. Mm-hmm. I've never. Where can I find this? In my grocer's freezer? Uh, I don't know. Maybe like a. Well, I know where my mom would buy it in New York, but that's all I. <laughs> I <laughs> Have you had it here in L.A.? I yeah well there's a place that you can go to not far from here about an hour drive called Loma Linda. I'm not. Which fine. is a hot spot of Adventism. I'm out. I'm Come not, on, go, I'm not go, go try it. I'm not taking a go road to Loma trip. Linda University and try out some Adventist food. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Trying to get to the cafeteria. There. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have a problem. Just walk around my yeah. tray. Hi. <laughs> Are there assigned seats? <laughs> I went to an Adventist university, and that's how we always knew someone was visiting. Is if they used the trays, we'd be like, "Oh, this guy's not from here." You marked him as a rube. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Look at this non-believer. And then look, I'll also have some uh, hot and spicy V8 juice. So oh, nice. Nice. My father my likes coffee. Like my dad. Your dad likes that? He loves V8. 
Edgar, what if I was your dad? Uh, would you be happy me, or sad? I would just be like, well, explain to me how you had such a hard time immigrating to this country. <laughs> Looked like it would be easy. <laughs> Well, it was the British, you see. They tried to starve us out. <laughs> Edgar, I'm to, to look away from you. Please. And look directly across the table from me. Hello. Very happy to see this person again. Lacey Mosley is back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that was a little punctuation the Fanfare there. for Lacey, oh, of course. Oh, thank you. Lacey, what do you eat every morning? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, guys, I don't eat breakfast. You're, it's the most important day of the week. <laughs> You never eat breakfast? It, I go through phases. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'll go through a phase where, like, I'll eat breakfast and I'll get up and I like an egg, too. I like a egg. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so I'll eat a egg <laughs> and um, I like grapefruit and then just, like, a mm. piece of toast. And I'm allergic to orange juice, but I love orange juice. Yeah. Is there any kind of orange juice that you can drink or no? No. It all has vitamin C in it, or citrus, rather, and citrus is what I'm allergic to. What about this grapefruit business? Uh, listen, I... <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those, like, it's a threshold allergy, so, like, I won't die. It's just, like, once I've had too much of it, it'll be like, I'll get, like, a random swelling, or, like, maybe my <laughs> lip will swell or something, and I'll be like, hmm. It's time to stop. Yeah, I have, a little bit. I have a brother. I have two brothers, so I won't say, I won't mention the names. I have one brother who um, was suspicious that he might have been allergic to uh, certain kinds of nuts. And so he tested this by eating those nuts oh, rather no. than just going in. <laughs> and getting one of those back <laughs> Yeah, <tricks>. Exactly. <laughs> it was like, let's see, is it this one? And then he <laughs> kept going until his throat closed. And it was like, walnuts. Okay, guess I can't eat those. <laughs> Not it's the way I would have done things. Much cheaper. Much. Than, uh, there you go. Saved himself a trip. <laughs> why? Why do you, my wife can go for hours without eating breakfast? I wake up hungry and I have to eat right away. So what? What? Do you just not feel hungry? Yeah. No. I actually regret like getting into food. Like I'm like more of a foodie now. I used to like not care about food or how it tasted, right. and those were the good days. Like I would just eat whatever. Now I have cravings. Have you guys heard of these things where you like want something specific, and it's never good for you. I never am like mm, celery craving. This feels like a bit that an alien does. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever experienced? Hunger? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up, fellow humans? <laughs> Your planet has cravings. Don't <laughs> what are you craving lately? Oh, man. I've been eating a lot of Dave's hot chicken, like too much, to the point where, like, I know sounds everyone. Like, sounds like a real foodie to me. They get, oh, okay, look, Yo, look. Hold I, on, hold on. I, Dave's hot chicken is a spot. No, I'm <laughs> sure. I'm sure it's delicious. Hey, I'm sorry. You want, me craving, you want me to be craving uh, some duck? You want me to be craving some, some great poop? Some molecular gastronomy. <laughs> yeah. I want some chicken cubes. Have you been to Dave's? I've not been to Dave's. I've heard it's fantastic. Oh, you got to come through with us. Oh, man. We yeah, go you got to pull up. Pretty much pull every up. You got to pull up. Good it's Lord. very lit. I know everyone in there. I'm like, hey, Tommy. I feel like everybody's name is Tommy. Um, <laughs> and I get free soda. When I go in there, very it's, nice. It's like, yeah. Oh, because you kept the cup. <laughs> no, because I'm a VIP ball Because I kept the cup. <laughs> you got to order it. Free refill. <laughs> so you, you got the cup. Is it hot chicken? As in. Temperature or yeah, spicy? Spicy. Spice. Spicy. Mm. Mm, it sounds good. Yeah, it's real. It's too good. I've been dipping it in the. I'm just giving them a free <laughs> advertisement here. Actually, I I'm, I take it back because I don't want y'all to go because it's always a line around the block. Uh, actually, they shut down for innovations, y'all. Tell your friends. <laughs> when? When? <laughs> Okay, they didn't shut down. I just didn't want oh, people to go. I was, like, I was just there on Monday. <laughs> Blowing the scam. I know. I was trying to I'm have a, a fool. You know I'm I love a, a scam. I'm sorry. I recently I know found you my love new scam. scam, too. What's your new scam? So there's this guy named... Um, <laughs> you know I love a scam. <laughs> His name is Paul Gonzalez, and he's a Southern California local. And his scam is he goes out with women on first dates, and then he leaves when the check comes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he just leaves. And he's done it so much that there's blogs about him, that there's oh, news articles. Women God. are like, if you see this man on Tinder or Bumble, like, don't go out with him. Like, so much so that a restaurant owner recognized him on a date with a woman, kicked him out, and then oh. bought the woman's dinner. Now, she probably 
probably was fine because but i guess he knew he wasn't gonna get that check anyway because so this leave. this guy had the fucking gall to go back to a restaurant that yes. he already hit yes that he already hit. that's bold and he, and that he is was, bold he's real bold he goes in early too sometimes he'll go in early and have a, a pre-meal and oh, then have pre-meal. a meal like have them reset the table and have another meal with the woman so he's not even like he's <laughs> hungry and and like taking advantage of women because he's starving he's like i'll just have two dinners one's <laughs> free he's insane it's crazy. Well, but I think both are free, right? Because then he just tags yeah. it on to yeah, the same bill. Yeah, it's tagged on to the same bill because women were saying oh. like they were seeing stuff that never even hit the table. That's insane. On the chain. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> this is just to get a free dinner, He's but it's like, like it seems like so much work. I mean, is it though? Well, you have to set up. You have to set up a date. <laughs> okay, yeah. You know what I mean? You, you have to like. Yeah, you have profile? to get her to go out. Like he has to do some like. Is he good right? looking? Yeah. Like, okay, he's moderately good looking. I think if I was like, because I already myself am lightly desperate. I'm like a low key desperate. Like, um, <laughs> when it comes to men in LA, it's like so hard. I'd be like, oh, you have a home. Oh my god, let's. <laughs> Tuesday sounds great. Um, I've literally you never sure dated someone home, with a home. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the lights are in your name. Oh, <laughs> show me a bill. <laughs> okay, we going now. So <laughs> it's hard out here. So he's getting all these women, and on his insta- okay, his on his profile, I looked him up on his dating profile. It says looking to stop looking. Psh, come on now. Wow. You looking to stop looking? That's romantic. <laughs> yeah, use one word and twice in the same sentence. That is, that is no different than you don't have to, we don't have to like each other to kiss. That's the same <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, maybe this is oh. Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> same guy. He has to keep changing his name. Absolutely. Wow. Is, it, is, he, is he still active? Yes, he's still active out here. They just did a news story about him. They were like, a he's news bad. Story. Yeah, he was mostly here in Pasadena so I think he's gonna go to a different borough in LA now because wow. it's too hot in Pasadena they know him they know his face <laughs> be on the lookout Glendale he's probably <laughs> headed your way next wow oh uh, uh, Aaron do you eat breakfast or no yeah I have to eat breakfast and I eat the same thing every day what do you eat I eat a banana and a piece of toast with peanut butter uh, let me tell you something I don't think I said it the last time you were here I don't like food pictures on Instagram I will scroll past them. I'll never like them, but Aaron's pictures of toast, Ugh. for whatever reason, man, that pushed my buttons. <laughs> like, that looks good. Thank you. Still couldn't bring myself to like it. <laughs> I, I understand. It's, a it's my policy. <laughs> What's my policy? I'm not even posting them anymore. I took Instagram off my phone. You said, did you really? Why? Why? Wasn't, I would find myself, like, you know when you accidentally <laughs> scroll to your own face, like, because you, you, like, like goes to the self face. There the is camera. nothing worse. There's nothing worse. Nothing worse. But my expression looked so miserable. And I was like, if this is what you look like when you're all looking at Instagram, why are you doing it? <laughs> like it was the saddest, that's, that's most fair. depressed. Like that's both my fair. eyelids were like so far down. <laughs> 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 like, my, well, <laughs> maybe you just should have said that. Is that like really focused <laughs> face, maybe? Focused, but just like, but not happy. Like, like <laughs> nothing going on. Like there, it looked, I looked dead <laughs> and on That's twitter weird. i'm like bop 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 what am i gonna say next <laughs> but i remember when you took twitter off your phone and i keep taking it off i keep taking you it d- off and putting it on yeah that's the that's more of like because I love it so much. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. I had to get back into it because I used to be all over Twitter and then mm-hmm. I was like, oh my god, I'm posting so much on Facebook. Am I old? And so I was like, oh, I, I have to tweet again. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's so hard. It's so hard. I, I I have too many threads with my mom like super involved on Facebook. I was like, oh no, I'm old now. This is what's happening. I have to stop. <laughs> These old people they drag you to their level. <laughs> it, they, that's what they want to do. They do. It's like your friend in hospice care. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take another break. Uh, when we return, we will reveal the location for our improv. And then, very quickly, Edgar, what do you eat for breakfast every day? I don't eat breakfast. Okay. And then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. 
If you've ever wanted to test your competitive chops on a game show, you should be listening to Dr. Game Show right here on Earwolf. In each episode, host Joe Firestone and Manolo Moreno play listener-created games with comedian guests and live call-ins. The games are hilarious, creative, and totally unpredictable. It's a show that the whole family can enjoy. In fact, some of the game creators and players are kids, and you never know what crazy rules they'll come up with or what they'll say next. Plus, some of your favorite Earwolf hosts have been calling in by surprise, like Matt Gourley, Brian Safi, Lauren Lapkus, Zach Reno, Tony Newsom, and Michael Ian Black. Dr. Game Show has also had Earwolf hosts as studio guests, like Chris Gethard, Gilbert Gottfried, and the guys from Hello from the Magic Tavern. And if you want to be on the show, you can submit your game show ideas to drgameshow at gmail.com and follow Dr. Game Show on Facebook and Twitter to know when you can play along live. Check out new episodes of Dr. Game Show every Wednesday, wherever you listen. Welcome back. Edgar just told us a horrible story. (laughs) (laughs) Folks, it is now time to reveal the location for our improv provided to us by, once again, production coordinator, Matt. Ooh. (laughs) Well, now we try to keep our personal (laughs) politics out of the show. (laughs) But first, just so as you know, oh, Aaron, why don't you sit here for this part? Okay. So you can have access to the buttons. But I can just say... No. (laughs) You can't do that again. (laughs) Just so as you know, please check out the episode with Wild Horses because there's a couple interesting moments with the sound effects. We We use... In order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say... We're in a scene and we need to travel into the past for some reason. We're trying to find out how something came to be. Someone's having a memory. Anytime we go into the past, we use this flashback sound effect. Let's say we want to get back to where we were from the flashback. Or anytime we travel into the future for any reason, we use this flash forward sound effect. Did you have this board made or is it something that exists? This board was made for us. By Engineer Ryan. Wow. Oh, shout out. It was it was a it, it was how I wanted it to be from the very beginning. We used to use a, a a tablet and it sucked. And then Ryan said, I could build you an actual thing. And then it ended up being exactly It's beautiful. It's, Damn. It's beautiful. It right? Is. We 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 sh- we need to say this periodically. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> he's blushing and he's crying a little bit. <laughs> What the fuck? Okay, so <laughs> past, future, uh, now the the last button sound effect. <laughs> this is a very loosey goosey show today. This last sound effect moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene. We want to find out what's happening at the exact same moment somewhere else. We're just changing location. We use this meanwhile sound effect. Past, present, future. Everyone gets it. And now it is time to reveal our location! <laughs> Provided to us by production coordinator Matt. <laughs> I was a was designer. That location is! That's right, big build up, Evan! Are you ready for this? Portland, Oregon! Motherfucker. Portland, <laughs> Oregon. <laughs> we take you now to Portland, Oregon. Hey, everybody. Uh... Thanks for coming with me to this uh, Airbnb. I know it's been so many years since we all saw each other in high school, but yeah. I wanted to, all of us to be in the same place for uh, when I made this big announcement that I'll be making at the uh, at the end of our stay here we, in this Airbnb. Just, just, I mean, I know you want to make a big announcement, but we, we know you're on hospice. <sighs> You're hooked up to several machines. Guys, I would prefer to make the announcement at the end of it, please. So if we could just be patient, I'll be making that announcement at the end of our stay here in this Airbnb. Roger, Roger. This is a hospice. You're in hospice, Karen. Yeah. It's okay. Like, how do you guys like your Airbnb stay? How 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 much are we gonna rate this place? Five stars? Four stars? What are you guys thinking? He wants to play host for a little while. Okay, that is nice. Okay, you know we did come all the way up here. I wasted so much gas. You drove? I mean, wasted's a big word for visiting a friend on hospice. (laughs) Yeah, that's the part that I'm upset about. I mean, I'm just saying, you don't ever visit me no more. I, I guess I get it. I mean, if you had just told us in the beginning, we would have stopped wondering why you were so 
you know, everything was always, you know, on your terms. Listen, guys, again, I don't want to mislead you what this announcement is about at all. I, I promise that I'll be making it at the end. But isn't it great that we're all oh, hanging boy. out with each other again and we're all being around? Man, we yeah. haven't hung out since high school, huh? I, I know. it's it's been Josh, how time. things been? It's, everything's been good. I mean, I'm a... Uh, I'm a poet now. Wow. Um, wow. Uh, yeah. I've Professionally? Been, um, uh, well, I mean, I'm a poet. I mean. <laughs> He's published. He's on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I saw That's a sponsor Trish. post. Did you pay for that? I uh, I didn't pay a lot for it. You oh, know, you're it's... self-published. I hear people are really into that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a way to go, you know. Like it's, no it's... label, like. Just yeah, I'm yeah. my own boss, you know. So oh, it's, dope. Um, yeah. Okay. So, it's, it's, so things are things are things are good. Where can we pick it up? Hard copy. Um, I guess K- Kinko's. I I could. <laughs> if you just use your laptop, we like go to cover. Kinko's, and then they selling it in the Kinko's. I mean, not directly, but they there there's a small fee, and then you could walk out of there with a hard copy of my poems. Sounds like a bookstore, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it might as well be. <laughs> but enough about me. Let's stop talking about me. Um, there, I see you got out of a cab to get here. I did take a cab here. Yes. Okay, I, for sure. And if you saw me get out of the front seat on the driver's side, it's because I asked the cab driver to let me experience what it was like to be a cab driver. Are you sat in his lap? Uh, no, he, he, he. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the past. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Need a ride? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. I'm going to uh, go to see an old friend. I think I think he's in hospice care. I'm pretty sure. What do you mean you think he's in hospice care? He's not or he is. Well, I mean, he is, but he's acting like he's not. He's acting like it's just a sort of reunion weekend. But, uh, you know, he can't leave where he is. All right. That sounds very terrible. It's not good. Yeah. It's not good. Well, and uh, just so you know, it's in... Portland, so it's going to be a big fair for you. Okay, yeah, we're in California, yes. so... No, I know. Of course I know. I'm, okay, I live yeah. here. Yeah. You could get a plane ticket. Now, you know what? I don't care. Get in the car. Okay, thank you. Get in you. the car. Do you mind when we get close to the uh-huh. destination, could I drive the cab in? Uh, Yeah, sure. I got a gun, so we could do that. What is that? <laughs> I mean, I'm not... Are you saying? No, I'm saying sure. You know, are you also in hospice care? No. <laughs> are you dying? Is I'm, this I'm your not. last look? I love Marty. Loves making wishes come true in Marty's caps, and I got a gun, so that means I can just shoot you, Daddy. No, Marty. I feel like I've misrepresented the situation. <laughs> I am not looking to get shot. I just wanted to sort of like have the experience. You don't want of, to get put out your misery at the end n- of the trip. No, I'm f- I'm fine. <laughs> I'm not in hospice care. I'm fine. You I'm sure? visiting a friend. You yes. sure? Okay. I'm People sure. look good one day, they're dead the next, you know? Well, that's true of all of us. I had a crush on a girl. She was so beautiful. She's dead now. Wow. That's that's very poetic, Marty. No, thank you. And I would know. <laughs> Marty, I told you, I'm not dead. This is just my face looks like when I'm looking at Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> no, every time you pick your phone up, you look dead. I'm not dead, though. You can't. Guys, keep telling people I'm dead. You can't do that. Oh, I've told a lot of people that you were dead. You ruined my life. Hey, Marty, uh, I just want to say I'm real sorry about your girl passing. Hey. Oh, my God. Hey. Thank you so much, no. Chris. Yeah, is this it, a casserole? It is right a casserole. Here, you guys, uh, I'm right can... here. I'm, I'm alive. Is it's like the, sometimes you hear body, sir? <laughs> yeah. I am alive. Oh, guys, gotta stop body. looking at Instagram. You... <laughs> you... So, Trish, what are you up to these days? Oh, my gosh. School? Um... I've just been doing, you know, the usual like close up magic and, you know. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you, what's close up magic? Well, I wanted it to be far away, but it turned out that that was like real and like where Hogwarts is and I can't get there. So I started doing close up magic. Mm-hmm. So you do like card tricks and coin tricks and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, I can that? like, okay, so do you ah. guys see this like um, little plastic sheet that I have? Yeah. 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 yeah, I see it. Okay, so you see how it's in my left hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see yeah. that, yeah. yeah. Okay, you're just, you're looking at it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. Whoa, what? Oh, shit. Wait a minute. It's, it's in, in my, your right hand. It's my right now. hand. How did that? I know, you were looking at it the whole time, right? Damn. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. that's not, uh, you shuffled your hands around and, and then. Magically. That was wild. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yeah. How good is this magic? 
I mean, you saw it, right? Do you think you could heal me? Oh. Oh, God. Oh, oh boy. Um, I mean, that's... If I was dying, of course. Like I said, I have not confirmed <laughs> I if I was again, dying or not. again, that's far away magic, not close-up magic. Okay, but yeah, sure. I could... I could here. Let me try. I'm well, gonna try. No, I mean no what? worries. Oh, uh, this no, is, I'll try. Okay. Okay. See how right now your oxygen is in your nose. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh shit! Put back oh, in. Shit. Put oh, back oh, in. Oh, sorry. Put back in. I thought maybe I'd like make him look healthy. Oh, I, I just oh. thought maybe that would help. I'm sorry. Oh. Are you okay? Yeah, because I'm not dying. <laughs> Uh, okay, Roger. Well, right. technically, if you use the magic to heal him, and that would be magic, if he had just died right now, that would have been magic too, right? Yeah, it would have been a dark yeah. wizard, right? I, I don't guess. think you understand yeah. magic, Monica. <clears throat> oh, wow, sorry. You guys, you guys still have like that high school romantic oh, tension? Oh, boy. That, Some oh, things never change, huh? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, remember, I remember when you told me that people who uh, move in together and kiss all the time... <laughs> Didn't have to be in love. <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying that, like, you know, we can just be roommates. Like, that that could be where this relationship ends. The deed is in my name. <laughs> the deed. I mean, listen, and I respect that, and I think that that's great. You had me sign these papers. This is a nuptial agreement. Listen, do we have to be talking about this mid-coitus? Like, is that what has to be happening right now? No. Ooh, I... <laughs> 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 you guys, you guys, boy, yeah. oh boy. Monica, what have you been doing since high school? Oh, what have I been doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, right. mostly, mostly I've been engaging in impromptu businesses. Impromptu? Engaging in impromptu businesses. Mm-hmm. Like, like you just impulsively get jobs? No, like I see a business opportunity and then I take it oh. impromptuively. Mm-hmm. And so, like, what are you doing right now? Okay, well, right now I'm here with y'all. Um, I am. <laughs> right, I, th- I think what you meant was. <laughs> We're going to have to define business. Al- along the topic of business, yeah. What, what, not like, where are you in time and space? I don't think that's. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> not like, okay. what's your business here? Oh, okay. You know, this business, you know, I like to use words. I'm a very grammatical person. You are. Uh, you always have been. Yeah, I like to finesse and just, you know, Machu Picchu whenever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, class, settle down, settle down. Before we take attendance. Are you hungover? Yeah, are you hungover, sir? What? Well, how do you know that term? Everybody just look at. Trish is basically hungover every day. Yeah. (laughs) What? I've been getting hungover since I was 14. (laughs) Hey! I don't need this information. I get hungover like all the time. Okay, please. I'm so hungover, I get hungover like while I'm drinking. Trish, Trish, you give me a headache. Okay, I just need to know who here is good with words. Who knows words? Mm, me, I know words. Monica, absolutely, positively. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Monica, can you? Um, I need you to write a letter for me. Okay. That I can give to the principal so I can leave <clears throat> school yes. early today. Absolutely. Let me get my quill out. What's another word for hangover? Ooh. But not the word hangover. Not the word hangover? Yeah. Okay. Um, residually intoxicated. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So. Um, uh, salutations. <laughs> perfect. I love it. Principal John Steen. <laughs> That's right. It is I. <laughs> your humble servant and teacher. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking over this letter, and it's very clear to me that you're just drunk. Uh, I don't think that's true, Principal. I mean, if a student wrote it, they wouldn't know. A student wrote the letter for you? No, I wrote it. What did I say? <laughs> and why do you keep calling yourself my your my humble servant? I am your humble servant, No, sir. you work for the school district. I, I meant it in a sort of old fashioned way, you know, to sound polite. Listen, we need to take you saw that I opened with salutations, Yes, yeah, right? <laughs> I did. It's a very formal letter. That's right. Listen, if you need to take the day, just take the day. Are you sure? Yeah, we know that you're just a seventh grade nerd, but we're going to need you to be principal of this school. I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> Listen, 
It's fine, okay? You're a little high-pitched, but I think people are going to buy it. You know, you're real responsible. You always do your homework on time. Listen, I know that I just suddenly grew eight inches over the last year, <laughs> but it's not a good thing. Listen, yeah. the school's cutting back. Just pop the retainer out. Pop the retainer out. We're going to get you out of PE. You're going to be the principal. Oh, oh well, I guess. Uh, uh, what's the first order of business? <laughs> Just if, call out teachers when they seem like they might be hungover. And send them home. We can't have <laughs> hungover teachers roaming the hall. Well, don't send all of them home. Not all of them, no. Keep the, keep the less hungover ones. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, anyway, it's, it's really great to see everybody again. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. really cool. I mean, yeah. circumstances aren't ideal, but no. it's still nice. I mean, we don't know what the circumstances are. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Oh, it's time for another blood change. Oh, thank you, oh, nurse. Who's this? Oh, this is my nurse, Vicky. Okay, so you have a nurse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. no, I'm sorry. Fuck, I fucked that up. Gosh. Uh, uh, it's me. Um, I'm my just, wife. Vicky. Yeah, I'm a, his wife, and I'm also a, I'm in the blood. Vicky, stuff. it's okay. We, <laughs> we know. No, this is my kink. This is my kink. Yeah, that's. Oh, Lee looks so sexy in those Ooh. scrubs. Yeah, hey, we gotta do this in front of people. It's so nasty. Well, then let's just wait. No. I so you don't need the blood? <laughs> Monica, is this it. weird for you to be hearing them like this? I mean, I'm a little uncomfortable just Why? a tad. We but I'm just... also seeing a new business opportunity. What business what? opportunity? What, what, what business? <laughs> she got a lot of blood in that cart. <laughs> and you could right. do something with it? I could probably do something. <laughs> uh, sorry, we were just sleeping. You came knocking at our door to sell us something? Yeah, uh, you woke us up. Yes, hello, sirs and ma'am. <laughs> oh, she's so polite. Yeah, let's uh, let's like hear that. her out. <laughs> um, I'm here procuring, well, uh, and providing an opportunity. Y'all got blood, right? Uh, we all got blood. I'd hope so, yeah. It's a great yeah. opening. We're all the same. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, I take it that far, ma'am. <laughs> oh. Excuse me. So please don't sorry. talk to my wife. I'm sorry, like sirs. <laughs> sirs and ma'ams, calm down. What I'm saying is, is that something that you never want to run out of is blood. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I feel that sure. way. I got some blood right here. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's 3 a.m., and I know what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why is this woman in front of our house? <laughs> yeah, trying to sell you blood. But this is something you hey, is that what you're doing? <laughs> well, honey, it's, I do get my period once a month. Mm -hmm. We should start replenishing. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm going to get them for a lot more years if oh. we're lucky. Mm -hmm. Just wasting it. I won't win that argument. Monica, what happened? You had like a faraway look in your eyes. You just stopped talking. Oh, I just had a fantasy about a business opportunity, but you know what? It's inappropriate for where where we at right now. I just saw dollar bills in your eyes. <laughs> Not dollar signs, but dollar bills? Yeah. <laughs> the full bill. I saw a full mm -hmm. Washington in your eyes. You know eyes. she's you might got having... those cool cartoon eyes. She has since high school. You know, yeah, they're hard. That's she true. Likes them yeah, it's yeah, a modification. Right. When I saw those, that's when I knew I wanted to be your roommate. See, there you go again. What? I'm going to just let you finish getting your blood sex or whatever <laughs> the hell y'all call It's blood sex, I told you. It's all, yeah, almost hurry up, a Vicky. Red Hot Chili Peppers album. <laughs> <laughs> all right, should we leave the room or... Wait, what, wait, where are you guys going? Wait. Oh, we no, thought no, you weren't well, you're getting a blood transfusion No, 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 stick around. I haven't made my announcement yet. Oh. Okay. Hey. Um, God, I have no, a please. question. Yeah, please, Trish. Can I go to the bathroom? Oh, yeah. Are we allowed to go to the bathroom? <laughs> no. What? Guys, I'm almost oh. done with my announcement. When I do my announcement, we can talk about it. Vicky. I uh, took a cab uh, from California. Yeah, so? I don't understand what you guys... I have a big announcement at the end of this that I'm going to make. I mean, Let's as just... long as you get to it, you know, pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. I guess I yeah. can hold it. Okay. Oh, man. What were you going to say? Well, Trish, I just wanted to know, like, you seeing anybody? Oh my God! For real? Are you like for real? Oh my God! Are you like? Are well, you, I, I, this seems inappropriate. I mean, your wife is here plus Monica. <laughs> Why are you trying to get on one knee? You just gonna fall out of this wheelchair? Oh, uh, stop it, please, uh, Trish. I uh, I have this lease that uh, my credit score isn't so good on, and I just was wondering. Wow, that if, shifted gears so fast. Yeah, it's. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say. I mean, I'm you know I'm asexual, but that I you know could consider it but this just seems Trish like, you're asexual you guys know I'm asexual have what? you ever seen me be interested in anything other than a cheeseburger oh I saw you in that documentary <laughs> what you wanna watch babe 
Ooh, I'm trying to watch that new asexual documentary. Oh, come on, man. I want to watch the league. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we watch a little something. I heard my friend is in it. Let's just put it on. All right, but after that, we watching the league. Okay, we'll watch the league after that. Ooh, it's starting. Oh, that's Trish. That's Trish right there. Right off the credits. Do you feel like having some sex or? Um, I mean, I guess I could like go either way. Does that mean yes? Ooh. It doesn't sound very positive. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely not a no, but it's definitely not a yes. I wouldn't do that if I were him. That sounds bad. <laughs> Trish, you didn't... I can't believe you've been in movies. I mean, that's yeah. major. Yeah, it was a documentary made about my life and the lives of people like me. What was me. it called? Asexual? Question mark. Wow. Nice. Oh, nice. that's the suspense. Oh. It was suspenseful. Was that from the Duplass Brothers? I know they have that deal at Netflix. Is that how you say that? <laughs> it's, it's not. Oh my god. <laughs> it sounded right to me. Wait a minute, but I had a meeting with them two weeks ago. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> it, hopefully. It is. <laughs> Yeah, have a seat. Uh, yeah, what are Duplass Brothers? Yeah, what are you uh, thinking about? Listen, I got this new documentary idea, okay? Oh, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, uh, well, uh, pitch, it, pitch it to me like I'm your friend. You know, call me by name. Yeah, right. pitch it to me like I'm a stranger. Well, okay, Mark and... <sighs> Jay, it's Jay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, the Duplass Brothers. Yeah, Duplass. Duplass. Uh, the Duplass Brothers. 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 Yeah, anyways, I like you guys. Duplass. Hey, are you guys filmmakers? Yeah, uh, show ya. Yeah. yeah, the Douglas Brothers. We're filmmakers. Douglas, right, Puffy TV Chair. Film. What's that? Puffy Chair. Puffy Chair to you, you are, sir. You're a Puffy Chair. <laughs> what? I don't no, know your no, no, the, the movie, The Puffy Chair. Uh, uh, so what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah we did yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Douglas. 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 What? Okay, uh, what about uh, the one the one I love? That's that's you guys, right? What are you talking about? Which, which one of us is the one you love? Yeah. Uh, well, Mark, I think that you're a phenomenal actor. Oh. I think, Jay, you're where the writing is happening. Oh, you're wrong stuff. about that, Sonny. Jay's the one who does the acting. Mark's the one who does the no, writing. I think That's I know right. factually that Mark's the actor. Oh, you think you know the Douglas Brothers? <laughs> <laughs> and it went well. They took my pitch. I mean, don't they both act and both write? Man, that meeting really didn't go the way I thought it went. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It sounds like it was phantasmagoric. <laughs> that was a really good word. It was Thank a really you. Good word. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay, Roger. I mean, let's just let's just cut to the chase. What's your big announcement? Yeah, yeah. Let's just Guys, get this over with. I only have fifteen minutes left to live. What? How do you? Then why do you know? need a lease? Why are you trying to get a lease signed if you got fifteen minutes left? Well, that's what the doctor said, but I don't know if I trust that guy. Fifteen minutes is so specific. Did the doctor tell you this fifteen minutes ago, no, or was he, this an earlier it was thing much, that he nailed down to? Uh, it was much. <laughs> Hi, Edgar. Yeah. Uh, so the prognosis is not good. Can I tell you, first of all, it's so hard to just listen to you talking to me about my diagnosis because your voice is just straight dreamy. I know. It's kind of sad because I work in such a hard profession and I'm constantly telling people horrible things and they're smiling at me. Mm. Uh, they're cheerful. And I'm like, no, your anus is going to fall out. Stop. It's going to bleed to death. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, it's going to be messy and, and not pretty. <laughs> Very sad. No, you're yeah, sad. In 15 minutes. So I really hope that you have some people coming to see you. No, yeah, I hope you have some people coming to see you. Stop it. <laughs> no, you, you're you going to stop it soon. Your heart's going to stop it. <laughs> oh, if you keep to talking to me like that. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I really have to pee. I mean, it's 15 minutes. Well, like I, said definite, the I said the announcement. So if you got to go. Is that a hard fish, 15? Well, like if we come hard, back, you're going to be dead. Well, I just mean, yeah, I don't want to go if you're going to well, be dead. Well, it was 15 when she said it. I can wait 15, but if you wait, hold wait. on longer than that, I can't. It was hold 15 it. when she said it? How long ago was that? Like 13 minutes ago. Oh, my God. Oh. Okay, I can wait two minutes. Yeah, I can, I can wait, wait two minutes. minutes yeah. yeah. Wait, you're going to go pee after I die? Well, we're, well, life goes on. What will you care? We're going to have to keep peeing. Yeah. I see a business opportunity. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> when you die, I see a business opportunity. What That's business all I'm opportunity? Well, Listen, you, you can do like a lot. For the morgue? <laughs> <laughs> or like, for yourself? For me. <laughs> for me in conjunction with the morgue. Oh, the middleman. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right, let's guard this body. Let's put it on the uh, uh, gurney and let's. Uh, yep. Excuse me, ma'am. Well, can you get out of our way? We're trying to take this body out. Oh, y'all trying to take this body? Uh, I saw a hearse when I was driving by, and I thought about opportunity. We have our own yeah, hearse. We yeah, we have a hearse. More, we'll more get it to the hospital. We'll have somebody. No, you don't yeah. even need to do that. I can do the hearsing. I for a nominal fee. I take the body in my Toyota Prius. Well, okay. we, we already we can't allow that. Actually, it's a, it's a hazard. Also, it's a we biohazard. we get paid to do that, yeah. so I don't know why we would pay you <laughs> to do the thing that we're getting paid. Maybe to you're do. in shock, ma'am. And no, you're just listen, listen. Brief. Let me level with y'all. Okay, I don't take the body. Y'all need some blood. <laughs> what to do? What with? I mean, I need blood. I actually could use some blood. Yeah. Okay. I wonderful. Cut myself wonderful. Today. Come over. Come back to my back of my trunk. All right. I got everything you need. Monica, pl- could you please just focus? Because I think we have yeah, such a limited time. Oh, with those dollars in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those whole dollar bills. <laughs> Sorry. All right, Roger, before you go, um, <clears throat> oh. I want to say it's great to see you again. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. You were always a good friend of me in high school. And um, and thank you for believing in me, you know, and believing that I could one day be what I am today, which is a... Published poet. Yeah, man. Hey, listen. Uh, maybe in heaven I'll get to read one of your poems. You haven't read any of my stuff? I was putting it off until, like, you know, like I had some free time. <laughs> and I definitely will now, am I right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're going to find a Kinko's unless you go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good roast trick. <laughs> Do you guys know I hate that place? Those yeah. places are the worst. Yeah, you've always hated it. You've always hated it. All right, well, that's my last words to Roger, I guess. So. Monica? Um, Roger, I just want to say, well, Wayne, you tricked me a lot. You know, I lost about <laughs> 17 years of my life uh, in our faux relationship, but neither here nor there. Would you let me do the honors of having your body when you die? You know what? I think that's the least I could do. Thank you. To pay back for everything I've done. Thank you. This is a business opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trish? I'm crying because I peed myself. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, damn. I'm so oh, no. humiliated. Mm. Why wouldn't you let me pee? I'm sorry, Trish. Uh, <laughs> I've always had a hard time letting you go. <laughs> are you going to need those pants by any chance? <laughs> what are you going to do with those pants? Why would you want my pee pants? Okay, uh, let me get this straight. What are you trying to sell me? These is pants with urine on them. But not just any urine. Sad lady urine. <laughs> so you could be into some freaky stuff. I don't know what you into. I got to tell you, you hit it right on the head. <laughs> And it all happened in a place called Spontaneous. <laughs> Aaron Whitehead, where can people find you should you wish to be found? What would you like to tell people about? Paul F. Tompkins. <laughs> they can find me on Twitter at Girl with a Tail. They can see me at uh, Largo and UCB with my team Wild Horses. That's right. And uh, that's it. It is. Uh, it is now July 9th as people are hearing this. Mm. So is there anything in particular you'd like to plug? Do you know what shows you have coming up? God, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Go find out the information, guys. But wild, The Wild Horses is one of my favorite. I know it's not The Wild Horses. The Wild Horses is one of my favorite shows. Um, it's so much fun. Uh, do check it out. Either the podcast, which you get on Stitcher Premium, yep. or uh, see it live in Los Angeles if you can. Edgar Mablazier. Same things. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Awfulgram and on Twitter at Edgar Montplazier. Uh I got the Culture Kings podcast on How Stuff Works. Please listen to that. And I got a, if it's July 9th. It sure is. Then uh, by now I should have out a web series called <gasps> Sad Boy Edgar. Go ahead and check that out on my oh, on Twitter. Brand. Edgar, do you <laughs> play the titular Sad Boy Edgar? I do. <laughs> this is exciting. Yes, it should be quite fun. Well, there we go. Where can that be found? On my Twitter. There exclusively. we go. It's, it's, it's Twitter exclusive. <laughs> Twitter exclusive. Duplass. 
<laughs> Lacey Mosley, where can people find you? What do you want to plug? Hi. Okay, you can find me at Diva Lacey. That's D I V A L A C I. It's the same for Twitter, Instagram, and Venmo. So you can just send me cash <laughs> whenever, wow. okay? Send me a, a dollar and I'll tell you a, a something about your future. <laughs> wow. Oh, <laughs> I'll do it, I swear to God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but enough scamming. Um, you can see uh, Edgar and I together at UCB on the Herald Team Leroy. Uh, and then you can also see me at Mod Night on the Team Mama. And then there's there's movies and, and shows coming out, but none of it's going to be July 9th. So, but that's four days after my birthday, so or five. So send me birthday money. Thank please, you. Please send her birthday <laughs> money, guys. Please. <laughs> Uh, Ebbage Letter. He's Ebbage Letter on all the things. Go to EbbageLetter.com and enjoy Ebbage Letter's non spontaneous work because Ebbage Letter is only the best. Yes. How do you spell Ebbage Letter? It's so simple. Even you could do it. It goes like this E B A N S C H L E T T E R E R. Remember that show? George Clooney, <laughs> Anthony Edwards. He had cancer. Today I thought that Anthony Edwards had cancer in real life and realized, no, that was just on the show. <laughs> I just said that as you said that. I was I, like, wait, was it his cancer I really or got, not? I got Such sad. a good actor. I really got so sad good. that it was like, oh, no, he died. No, he's not dead. He's not dead. He's alive. Thank you, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't forget. July 14th, we're going to be in Philadelphia. The We the People Improv Festival, Spontaneous Nation Live is headlining Eugene Cordero, Tony Newsom, Little Janet Varney. Then in Detroit uh, in August, I think it's August 9th, uh, same deal, Spontaneous Nation Live with those people, the Detroit Improv Festival. Uh, please do come on out and see us if you're in those areas. PaulFTompkins.com slash live for all the ticket info. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying Semper in Presenti. Y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Good callback. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>